Firstly, welcome back to the virtual island. I think we'll be staying here for a bit because it's about the only sunshine we'll be seeing in Britain so far this year, I think. Um, um, I've been watching the election in Ireland and even though I would identify as fairly far to the left, even I would say that, well, it's quite obvious why a certain party and a certain Irish Republican party has not done quite as well as it thought it might do over there. Now, here's the results for Ireland um, with most of the seats filled, with the incredibly slow counting. I think they've they've hired a snail to do the, the local election counting there. I think a fluffy snail is wandering around the, the bogs and boreens of Ireland doing this counting as it's getting quite ridiculous at points. But shit, Vane have 102 seats. At first glance, that actually looks quite decent as it's a rise on what they had in 2019. But if you look at what they had against the general election in 2019, it's a big drop. They've lost a lot of support and there is a good reason for it. And I'm going to call it the strange death rise and death again of Sinn Féin. Sinn Féin, of course, is tied to Irish history and tied to the formation of the uh, style. But once Ireland became a free state, it gradually withered away for a long time, and it only slowly assumed some prominence again in recent years. It had a presence, of course, in Northern Ireland, but in the Republic, it's it was a marginal party for a very long time, was tainted with that association with violence. It slowly managed to put that aside, and in the last general election did very well and was nearly the top-scoring party. But it's, well, I'm not going to mince words, it's fucked itself up, and I'm not going to apologise for the F-word, because it's done the one thing that no political party can afford to do and keep being successful. It's ignored its electorate. You can see the same happening here in Britain, where there is a refusal to listen to uh, the local electorate. And even though I would say I tend extremely far to the left and uh, I describe myself as socialist, bordering on almost communist, and I don't apologise for that, whether anyone likes it or not, um, Sinn Féin have resolutely refused to listen to their local electorate who have had concerns about immigration, health and all sorts of other things. Now, I do not blame the migrants who have been in Ireland because they are being used as scapegoats themselves. But Ireland has a particular culture and it's a small country and the rural areas of it are, are, have a particular culture where you cannot just stick people in from cultures that are very far removed from it and not expect there to be trouble or awkwardness. Even I, as a self-confessed wokey blokey, would admit that. But Sinn Féin seem to have thought that by just ignoring it, and this applies also to the two main parties, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael, who, uh, they would all go away. And so would the homeless crises. Everyone would just suddenly be ha housed. It doesn't surprise me that you have people like Malachi Steenson in, in Dublin, who no one could accuse him of being a particularly right wing. He was associated with the Workers' Party, who were... If I'm left wing, Malik is so far left, he's coming back round to meet himself. But the locals are concerned about their jobs, education, housing, things that all working class people are concerned about. And if you've grown up in a working class area, they're things you're naturally going to be concerned about. I certainly was growing up, so were my parents. But uh, the apparatchiks uh, up at in the Doyle seem to imagine that they can just issue some bl blundering statements and chunter along, or issue some feel-good rubbish. Sinn Féin seems to have got caught up in a game of identity politics of the week and photo ops over that, rather than sticking to any core discernible principles at times, and thus has lost its core base, to, because they're not particularly interested in any of that. They're interested in exactly uh, two or three things, and one of those is how are we going to put food on the dinner today for... Little Sorsha and Little Patrick, that's what they're interested in. And that's what I'd be interested in if I was them. I wouldn't be interested in anything else. But I predict that we're going to see the same sort of thing when we come to a general election in Ireland. And 
we've got all what slightly less than four weeks now to the election in England, and then there'll be the election in Northern Ireland. And I'm wondering how well Sinn Fein will do at that point. Whether there'll be another strange death of Sinn Fein again, and it will drop the support it had last time, and whether other parties will take it back again. I ended up talking to a friend I hadn't seen for years on Saturday evening on the phone, who's actually a loyalist. And strangely enough, we got work, we get along very well and work together for several years here in London. And we used to do endless banter and bullshit about me being Republican and him loyalist. But I'd also trust him with my life and consider him a really good friend. And his point of view was that basically he feel from the ground that Sinn Féin in the working class estates there, the people just feel betrayed. And I could probably agree with it. And that some of them are either tactically voting or will vote for the older, more moderate parties like the SDLP, or will even if need be vote for the dreaded unionist parties if they feel they're at least going to guarantee that they might have a job tomorrow morning and and not be on board with Identity Parade Special Number 2010. Even I feel that's gone far, far too far and stepped over into a continuing game of silliness. It's Ireland is a very small country, and even if it was to be united tomorrow morning, with we'd have only roughly 7 million people on that island in the country. You cannot just fuddle people in there endlessly. You're creating a recipe for social disaster. And it's something that, if there's a refusal to hear it, it will become a powder keg in the end.